Hey y'all, TGP here. It is one day after Hurricane Ian. Um, I was not able to film any range footage this weekend, so we're doing a vlog instead. You guys have, have told me before that you wouldn't mind having a vlog every now and then. I'm not totally sure what a vlog is. I'm gonna keep saying it like <laughs> vlog. But uh, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you some stuff that I love. We're gonna review just stuff that I like, just stuff around the house. You know, this is the, uh, by the way, this is the penguin nest. I don't know if penguins live in a nest. It's our, it's our rock pile, you know? It's our rock pile where, you know, the penguins, they, they, they that seems to be how they kind of live. Uh, we got everything that two penguins might need. We got, we got some, you know, different bars and popcorns and the candle. Penguins love candles. And then uh, the, the, the kitchen area. This is like uh, the worst version of MTV Cribs. Like this is like MTV. Look at the couple rooms that we live in. <laughs> it's it's awesome. You know, got your Thorn Creek Teen, your Epic Meat Bars. You know, that's that's what you need. And so we we've been the, we've always been the kind of birds that would rather have a smaller space so that we could have an excessive number of guitars and firearms and ballpoint pens. And you know, uh, uh, scents. We're gonna look at. We're gonna, so we're gonna look today. At, we're gonna take an awkward BuzzFeed quiz. We're gonna read some awkward emails I got sent and respond to them. Then we're gonna look at some perfumes. I may have already said that already. And I don't know if that might be it. I don't know. I don't remember what else is on the list. But come on, let's do it. Come on, right this way. Oh, shower gun. You guys found out that I have something that I call shower gun. You thought that was weird, and you demanded an explanation. That's fair, and I'm gonna give you one. So come on, come on, follow me. Right this way, right this way. Some of y'all know this, and some of you don't. I'm recording an album right now, and that's exciting for me. I haven't put out an album since 2017, 2016. I don't remember. It was, it was one of those years. And instead, I spent all the time in between producing albums for other people. It was time for me to put out some music. So this is where we do that. This is the TGP amp collection. The last time we looked at this room, I didn't have all my amps out, but now I have all but one out. A uh, Marshall Silver Jubilee that's coming here pretty soon. But we've got Vox AC15. We have vintage Ampeg B25, uh, vintage Brownface Silver, uh, Brownface Fender Concert that inside has been converted into like a Dumble thingy. It was not done by Dumbo, it was done by a Dumb Dumb, but that's what that is. And we have Silver Face Fender Champ, Handwired Brown Face Fender Princeton, Handwired Black Face Fender Deluxe Reverb. Then we have Tweed Handwired Fender Deluxe. We have Vintage 1974, man, I have a lot of 1974 shit, don't I? 1974 Silver Face Fender Twin Reverb. Super Lead up there, Marshall Super Lead, that's one on top. The one below it is a Marshall Vintage Modern, the 50 watt version, and below that is a Marshall Bottom Cab. The Marsnal. The Marsnal, yes, that's Marsnal brand, Bottom Cab. It's a real bottom bitch, and I love it. That's the best cab I've ever had. It's fantastic. So, first thing we're gonna do, eh, fuck it, let's show, I got my pedal boards on here too. I got my big ass studio pedal board. I just keep saying we're gonna do one thing and then we do a different thing. Then I got a little pedal board over here. This little, yeah, yeah, little. And what do you I, have to say for yourself, TGP? Nothing good, nothing good, that's for sure. At least the sun's shining, unlike yesterday when the world was unraveling outside, it felt like. Actually, we weren't hit as hard as it, we could have been. Um, then we got my uh, recording stuff over here, SSL Fusion, below that UA Apollo, below that UA2610, UA Oxbox on top, and my bass amp at the moment, my primary bass amp is a dark glass Alpha Omega 900, and I got some other pedals scattered around, like the uh, Strymon Timeline, which I'm always reticent to use because it makes everything sound like you're a youth pastor and you just discovered delay, and so you're gonna play two notes because that's the only thing you know how to play and you're just going to do cascading delay because that makes because you're the edge yeah because you're the edge you're, you're edging closer to god you know helping you helping you get up there you can edge with his grace so i get sent so these king <laughs> i guess he's technically the king of kings <laughs> whatever god's like you will address me as your grace <laughs> 
Viserys the first. Is anybody watching House of the Dragon? Anybody on that hot D? Anybody? No, I can't hear what you're saying. You're you're on the other side of the computer. That, that's fine. Just write me an email. So I get all these marketing emails, as all small YouTube channels do. You don't ever hear from somebody that you want to hear from. Like, wow, my rug's like coming apart here. That was probably on film, but that's fine. I need a new rug real bad. We've had this rug for a thousand years. Sentimental value. And it's always been like the studio rug, you know? So you get these emails as a small YouTube channel, and a lot of you have, have YouTube channels sim of similar size to mine, so you know this. It's never from people that you want. Safari Land ever sends you an email. Like, Glock never sends you an email. HK, they don't ever send you an email that's like, hey, we are gonna send you this thing, no strings attached, and we want you to review it. That's not what happens. Instead, it's some janky ass fucking company that makes $5 holsters that's like sending you this typo ridden message that's like you you we send you hol holsters you you review you we you pay us still and then we get a free review on your youtube channel it's really annoying and what they're doing is they're basically saying we're going to spend three dollars and we're going to get free free marketing from you most people, I don't know what they expect. I don't know if they expect that we're going to read that and go, wow, this really legitimizes me as a YouTube channel to get sent free crap and you're going to just compromise all of your credibility to, to do that. But I fucking hate these emails. They're always embarrassing for the company and I really like to ridicule them. So let's take a look at one I got yesterday. Let's ridicule it and then write a ridiculous response. Let's do it. All right, so first, let's see this company. This is from, this is from John Michael at KT Tactical. And he says, actually first let's look at KT Tactical. That'll be funnier. Let's see what we got, what they got going on here. Huh, this actually looks a lot more legit. Oh, it did look a lot more legitimate than I, I'm gonna click on that, but I'm like, should I? I uh, so, all right, these people seem to actually make stuff that's not five dollars, which is a which is a big difference. But it's very much uh, very much anime themed, which if you've watched the channel before, you know that's very much not an anime themed channel. Um, I do kind of like this that we have this uh, this sushi charm that hangs off of your uh, off of your gun. Mm. I like that. I'd probably get hungry though, so I don't think that's smart. People go, why? The gun would just be dangling from my from my mouth like a fucking cocker spaniel. You are a penguin. Yeah, I mean penguins can't resist fish. Um, by the way, there's some penguins at the local zoo. We've become very good friends. They they recognize me as as one of their own. I can't help but feel. So let's look at their holster. They want to send us a holster. Okay, so believe it or not, this actually looks a lot better than most of what I'm sent, to be completely transparent. This is your window into the way this industry works, at least on the, on the end with really, really small channels. This, this stuff does look better. I mean, it's probably still the same, you know, uh, 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 made in China crappy holsters that pretty much every other company has, but um, Gun and Flower is the name of that. So maybe I was wrong about the quality here. Forty-four ninety-five. What is gun and flower? That one has no branding on the clip. Hmm. Maybe it's not any better. Maybe I'm being glamoured by the guns that I'm seeing in the holster because this is generally pretty decent stuff. All right. Let's look at the belts. Full Molly. Yeah, I mean, this is pretty cheap stuff, actually. It just, I think the, the you can fall for this sometimes. It even happens to me where, like, the branding is so much better. The color palette is so much better. You you fall into this, this trap where you're like, oh, that looks legitimate. It's not enough to make me fall for the trap of actually uh, doing work with this company, but, which we'll get to that in a minute. Let's look at their AR-15 stuff. Complete uppers. I've always preferred downers myself, but... Um, you know. All right, so complete uppers. This stuff's expensive. Um, Is it because it's pink? 
It could be. I mean, yeah. I mean, that aesthetic stuff does. That had to be Cerakoted, so that does that does cost some money. Let's look at this. Let's look at this uh, Kawaii Mini uh, five inch five five six. You know, I like. Um, I like the idea of a five inch AR. Surprisingly, I know it sounds weird, but there's still going to be a lot of uh, a lot of foot pounds of energy left there, even if the blast is insane. Um, it's got an SLR rail. We've got a, a hollow sun dot. I mean, this this stuff is pretty decent here. Let's let's see. There's a video of it being fired. Not crazy about that charging handle, but wow, that's some fucking fireball. God, maybe I wouldn't want a five inch AR. Um, This design, this was designed so that most people would not want to replace any part of this upper with something else. The only problem here is though, that even at this price, like there, there is arguably better stuff on there. Okay. This was made to be as loud as possible. Okay. That's, that's fine. I could, I could see that. All right. Okay. So we've established that in this case, the, the quality is not nearly as low as some of the stuff that I'm offered. That's fine. You know, I'm not into the whole anime thing, but our real problem is what the email says. Hey, the gun penguin, my name is, it says some weird punctuation and I'm gonna read it exactly the way it's fucking written <laughs> because it's funnier like that. Hey, the gun penguin, my name is John Marketing, assistant from KT Tactical, strange use of hyphenation there, he meant to have a dash. The reason I reached out to you is because I acknowledge that you are doing gun reviews on your YouTube channel. Wow, finally, finally someone has acknowledged that I'm doing gun reviews on my YouTube channel. None of you will acknowledge it. You know what? It's been five years and not one fucking person will acknowledge it until John Michael came along here. So thank you, JM. Fuck all of you. All right, so now that I've been acknowledged, he says, I just watched one of the videos on your channel. It's really interesting and great to watch. That tells me that he didn't actually watch the video, but that's fine. Let's see what he linked to. Yeah, it's just the most recent video I did. All right, the FN 509 video. He says, I wonder if you are interested in doing a collaboration with us. If you do, we would love to send you our products for you to use. I'm thinking of sending you our holster one of the best selling products on eBay on exchange for a shout out or a review video on your channel. Please have a look at our products at our products website and let me know what you think. KT Tactical Holsters. Yeah, I mean, it's the ones we were just looking at. Yeah, they look fine. Again, slightly a cut above what we're what we we usually see, but still, you know, probably not what most of us would wanna would wanna use. Hope to hear from you soon, John. KT Tactical One Eight Five Four Three Your Belinda Boulevard, Number One Five Three Your Belinda California Nine Two Eight 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 Six. Okay, that's not the problem. The problem here is that like usually when a really great company reaches out to me, like. Uh, like God, I don't know. Uh, like uh, Spectre, when they sent me a sling, they they don't say, "Oh, give us a shout out or a review." That's what this is for. This is a transaction. They're just saying we're sending you this. Do with it what you want. Say something nice about it if you like it, or don't. Just do nothing with it. Just enjoy it for yourself. It's not. It's not a. It is a transaction in the sense that someone sending me something is is going to make me feel warm fuzzies about them and the product. Of course it is. It's a gift. Like if you walk up to me on the street and are like, I, I got you this muffin. I'm going to be suspicious. I'm probably not going to eat the muffin because I know you, you rubbed your dick on it. But I'm at least going to feel warm and fuzzy because you thought to get me a muffin. And that's going to make me happy, right? But when somebody says, we're going to send you a $35 holster that's really like a $5 holster. And in exchange for that, you're going to give us a shout out or a review. D do you think that my integrity is worth so little? Do you think that my integrity can be bought with a holster? This is everything that's wrong with the gun industry because if this is happening on this small scale, then what's happening on the larger scale? What's happening with these bigger channels? What do those transactions look like? And so, 
a lot of channels get these emails and a lot of people give in. A lot of people go, all right, I'm gonna do the Olight video to scrape in a little bit extra money. Everybody's doing it, you know. I'm gonna do the uh, wh whatever whatever the cheap light of the of the week is that are sending you emails to to try and get you to feature them on your channel. This is leading to this place where none of the information that you see on most YouTube channels is of any value to you or anyone else because it's not legitimate. The only thing that's legitimate is, yeah, you're seeing a picture of that product and maybe the person used it for a day or two to film the video, but past that, it's of, it's of no value. So I think we've got to send a message that this kind of thing isn't okay. You know, like, I'm not talking about somebody who does a fucking Raid Shadow Legends ad in the middle of their, of their video to make money for the channel. That's great. I would do that in a heartbeat. That has nothing to do with firearms or firearms reviews. That's just paying the bill. This goes past this. This is me saying, I stand behind this product. This product that, that you're going to put a gun in and stuff in your pants and point it at your balls and walk around with it all day. How, how could I do that in good conscience? Are we, are we worth so little? And then also, you know, it's disrespectful to the audience for them to say, you know, we think that the good people of the gun community are, are dumb enough that this is going to work. And so I'm not saying this to pick on KT Tactical in particular. You know, there's, I'm sure they're a fine company other than the fact that, you know, they don't know how to write or, or use dashes, which is very irritating to me personally, but that's fine. Um, other than that, I'm sure they're, they're perfectly nice people, but we, we can't, we've got to get to a place where companies, when they send out an email like this, they stop and think, huh, I don't know. Is 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 this a is this a great idea? Is this a great idea to influence people? So if you're a, if you're a company listening, the better thing to do is to send an email that just says, "Hey, I'm going to send you this. If you like it, great. Say something about it. If you don't, no worries. This is not a transaction. This is just me sending you a holster to get your feedback." I would have probably said yes. Please, please, please send me a holster. I, I will give it a try. But to say I'm thinking of sending you a holster in exchange for a shout out or a review. No, fuck you. That's not okay, it's not good for the audience. Um, it's not good for your company either. Dearest John Michael, thank you for acknowledging that I do gun reviews. That's more than most people do. Thank you for your kind words about one of my most recent videos. I can tell that you definitely watched the whole thing. I too felt that it was interesting and great to watch. Your sweet words combined with your kind acknowledgement work in tandem to cement our bond. As for your generous offer of one $30 holster in exchange for a whole review video, I fear that I must decline. My dignity is not worth so much that I could trade it for such a valuable item. My dignity and the credibility of my channel is simply worth no more than an $8 holster, and I cannot in good conscience accept more. Please accept my regrets in lieu of one of the best-selling products on eBay. In the arms of Satan, the gun pain. P.S. I would, however, be willing to trade my dignity for one of those Hello Kitty guns. You see, those things are quite fire, and I would do most anything to attain one of these garish abominations. If you like me, please write back. If you want to hold hands, write back twice. P.S.S. Are you my friend? P.S.S.S.S.S. Tonight we camp by the Appomattox Courthouse. General Benning is not one for surrender, and I fear that I shall perish tomorrow upon the field of battle. Should you find this letter, please return it to my dear Abigail. By the way, anything that says in exchange for a review, guess what? It's not anymore. It's not a review. It's a commercial. So. Let's move on to something happier. Now that we've just sat here and you know bitched about the state of advertising in the gun industry for this long, let's talk about something that I love. Fountain pens. Oh yeah, fountain pens. They do it for me. So let's let's look at got some lovely fountain pens here at my desk. Let's 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 look at these these beautiful fountain pens. Oh yes. 
I love fountain pens, can you tell? A few of these aren't fountain pens. Let me, let me get those out of here. We don't need these non-fountain pens. I guess it's just one. So I absolutely adore fountain pens. The reason that I adore them is that they take the, the, the mundane task of writing by hand. Ugh, who does such a thing in the year 2022? It takes such a mundane task. It really, really spruces it up. You understand why people write, liked writing letters so much back in the day. Um, because it was a magical, magical experience. So I'm one of those people who's really obsessed with inks. I like inks more than the actual pens, I think. I kind of just use use the pens as vessels for for holding the the inks. Uh, so I'm a really big fan of these uh, these Lamy's. Lamy's are, uh, are nice and cheap, but they still write great. And I tend to like fatter nibs, uh, medium nibs for the most part. And uh, and then also on the, uh, the cheaper in these, these pilots. Buy them in all different uh, fantastical colors, some of which have no relation to the actual ink color inside, which is always, always kind of fun. And now lately I've been enjoying these, uh, these Monte Verdes, which I say all Southern like that. That's a Monte Verde pen. You see that there? Yeah, look at that. I love that. That's great. And then uh, Conklin, which I think is actually made by Monte Verde as well. Excellent, excellent pens. The, the the penis mightier the penis mightier than the sword as we all know um i really want to branch out into like a, i want to get one really good pen if any of you guys have any have any suggestions i don't want to i don't want to get anything like ludicrously expensive but i'd like to get a, a nice pen this year something a little bit different but the inks for me the inks are the star of the show so we're going to go pull out my ink collection and look at all of them and tell you why i like the inks so much so follow me. Welcome to Ink World, pimp. Why am I poking at my ear on video? You get an ear itch and you forget that you're filming, and so you're like, ah. Yeah, it's great. The audience loves that. It's it's hot. Women love it, men love it, horses love it, everyone loves it. It's just great. BDSM horse told you to do it. Yeah, Sir Thomas Equinus himself. All right. This is my ink drawer. There's a bunch of other like broken plates in here, which makes no sense. I don't know why any of that's in here, but there's also inks in here. That's the star of the show. So I'm not, we're not gonna look at all these ink samples that I've got. Uh, you know, they're just saying, I haven't tried any of those yet anyway, but you know, let's, let's, let's get these, let's get these little bad, little bad children out of here. You gonna get them out on a tray? Yeah, let's get these out on a tray. Nice. Speaking of, we have talked about me possibly eating an MRE on camera. What the fuck is happening up there? there, are, there our neighbors are pounding it out. You know, a little pounding therapy. Yeah. They're clogging. Yeah, they're clogging. Rolling. Up the toilet. <laughs> That's stupid. <laughs> you laugh though. Don't go give me that shit, you laugh. <laughs> All right, so I have two. I have two brands that like I'm fucking obsessed with, like ludicrously obsessed with. Uh, one is is Edelstein. This is Edelstein inks. Yeah, I might be fine. Um, Edelstein inks are are, are, are gorgeous. Uh, they don't do as much of the metallics or anything, but they're just they're really bright, vivid, vivid colors. So here we have a star ruby, which is uh, is sort of like a um, like a, a pinkish reddish, quite quite fetching. That's a awful word fetching this is sapphire by edelstein most beautiful quite beautiful indeed this is aventurine which is a beautiful green like a foresty green no actually no it's more of like an emerald green uh it's 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 quite it's quite beautiful and then my other favorite brand that i'm just completely obsessed with is 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 Diamine. And I think my favorite diamine color is is blue velvet. Blue velvet is without a doubt my favorite blue. It's th th this is actually the ink I probably write with the most. Um, then we have from the same series, purple dream, or as we call it right here, purple dream. Do we call it that? Yeah, I call it that. Just leave me alone by it. That's what I call it. Poppy red, which is like a super bright, vivid red, M most beautiful. I don't know how I said that. Um, then we have a Sherwood green, which uh, uh, really doesn't bear that much resemblance to the Fender custom color. Um, this 
although it's still beautiful. This diamine, this is a metallic uh, flake green. This looks exactly like Fender Sherwood green. It's really, really close. It's uh, most, most beautiful. Uh, I've got this Pelican Black. I don't use this much anymore because uh, the, the black inks that I tend to prefer are, are more of like that super bright glossy black. I, I don't like the, the charcoal grayish black as much. Then we've got our Private Reserve Tanzanine. I haven't actually tried that yet, it was free. But my favorite black is this Aurora. Uh, Aurora is that super shiny gloss black, absolutely gorgeous. Uh, this is the black that I use most often. I'm almost done with this container. I've got to switch to this one. Uh, it's a gift from a customer at the guitar shop. Uh, lovely, lovely guy who had some extra extra ink and knew that I was a fountain pen guy and, and brought it up there to me. So, I love fountain pen ink. To say that I'm a fan of fountain pen ink would be a massive understatement. And most people, you know, they have this issue of buying like, oh, I'm looking at this new $300 pen, not me. I'd rather have a $30 pen and some crazy ass ink that goes in it. It's a weird way to say that. But yeah, I'm always looking at the diamine inks. If you have a diamine ink recommendation, please let me know. And I'm also on a quest to get all the Edelsteins. Uh, is it Edelstein or Edelstein? Is it different in the Mandela Effect universe? Is it yeah. like Baron Stein? Everybody knows the Edelstein Bears. Uh, that's spelled a little bit differently. Uh, this is the Edelstein Bears, though. Cool. Yeah, definitely. Glad we cleared that up. Yeah, and this one, uh, Shazam the movie, is a real thing. So, that's good. But, um, we didn't do shower gun, but we're going to do shower gun now. You guys ready? All right. Right this way is shower gun. So, before we go in here, I, we have to talk about something really important. Why shower gun? A lot of people have asked this question over the centuries, you know, going back and back and back, probably back further. You know, originally, someone surely asked Augustus, Augustus, why do you have a shower knife? And he was like, because, you know, I'm showering and the Parthians might send an assassin to uh, cut my throat while the olive oil and dirt is being scraped from my body. Uh, by my bathroom servant. And so even back then, people were having this debate, do I need a shower gun? And you do, you absolutely need a shower gun because you are naked, your balls are out, they're dingle dangling in the water, you don't have any way to defend yourself, someone could come right in there and just take you out. This, this is a threat all of us face. But what got me thinking about this, is in every third James Bond movie, let's say, James Bond is inexplicably assaulted while bathing, showering, in a sauna, swimming, some sort of water and nudity-based assassination attempt. But the one that comes to mind is the, in the movie GoldenEye, which came out in 1995, I was eight or nine years old at the time, Pierce Brosnan is attacked in the bathroom or sauna by Xenia, who attempts to kill him with nothing but her butt muscles. And he initially seems kind of into it, and he's like, if I have to go out this way, you know, there are worse ways to go out. And he was right, there are much worse ways to go out than that. Like, you know, Xenia killed that one old man and stuffed him in a closet, and even that, he, he seemed okay with it, really. So James Bond somehow resolves the situation with his gun. I don't remember what happens, but you need to have shower guns. Now, now how, do you, how, do you, how do you choose a shower gun? What needs to be small, water resistant, reliable, and I guess small again, because you know, I mean, how the fuck are you getting it into the shower? I mean, you have to do it publicly, you know, you don't want to be printing, which only leaves prison wallet. Enough talking, let's go look at shower gun. Actually, I've got a, a second shower gun option to show you the finest options for shower gun here. Okay, I have all my items together. I'm actually ready now for the shower gun presentation. How long did I talk there in the beginning about shower gun? Like a while. Like, like was a was good it like, thing. It was like a weird amount of time. <laughs> no, it was entertaining. Okay, you be sure. One hundred percent. Okay, welcome to the realm of shower gun. Right this way, right this way, ladies and gentlemen. Do you hear that? Do you hear that? Come here. Let's let's see. Do you hear that? Like. 
That is our toilet singing, singing the song of its people. Listen, listen, you can hear it. Ah, sing with it. No, no, do it, sing with it. I'm good. No, the people at home, I'm not talking to you. People at home, you don't matter. People at home, sing. <laughs> sing it. Ah, no, you sing. Ah, sing it. Okay, fine, you can you know, can't fucking do it. All right, that's fine. Sing it, sing it. Ah, sing it. I thought you said I don't matter. No, no, that was then. Things changed. <laughs> sing it now. Sing it. Ah, ah. Yeah. Oh, man, I got you sing with the toilet. All right, come on. So, okay, I know, look, I know how this goes. They're right now at home in the comments. There, a million of you are fucking amateur plumbers right now, and you're going to be like, all you got to do to stop that is, is listen, well, first of all, let's get oh, that down. Man. Did you film in the toilet? No. Thank God. <laughs> so, I know all of your amateur, all of your amateur plumbers at home, and you're like, you know, you know that fucking floating ball sack that goes in there. All you gotta do is replace that, and it's not gonna do that. So just go down to Home Depot and get the fucking, and y'all have weird names for them. You're always like, you know, the poo poo chain and the floating ball sack, and that's gonna close up that toilet and is never gonna run again. I don't care. The landlord's doing it. I'm not doing having anything to do with it. We're making the landlord do it. That's not my problem. I don't fucking fuck with poo poo chains and stuff. <laughs> all right. That's not, that's not my problem. All right, so the shower gun we have on display right now for this particular presentation is the, uh, the Beretta Tomcat. And the reason we like it is you can, you, because of the tip-up barrel, if you have slippery, uh, wet shower hands, you can manipulate the gun. Well, you still have to tip up the barrel. You can get a bullet in no more ease. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Shower gun. There's no, there's no, you know, ain't no PC name for that. There ain't no real name for that. So. Brenda Tomcat makes an excellent shower gun. Another one that makes an excellent shower gun is the Smith & Wesson Airweight. Smith & Wesson Airweight is a fine shower gun. Uh, also corrosion resistant, it's got an aluminum frame, you know. Really, really great, 38 Special. Then we have the Ruger SP-101, which many have said is the definitive shower gun. And, and the reason this is the definitive shower gun is because it's stainless and fires the almighty 357 Magnum cartridge, which is known to be one of the most powerful shower cartridges. Uh, a few things compare. So if you're looking for a shower gun and you do need a shower gun, you're going to need to go for one of these options. These are the only good options I've found. A lot better than the PPK. That James Bond didn't really know what he's doing when it comes to choosing guns, but we've known that for a while. So, all right. We're going to leave those right there as part of our uh, shower gun display. God damn, that toilet is loud. Sing it. Come on, sing the toilet song. Sing it. Ah, ah. Yeah, she's singing with the toilet again. Alright. Alright. So, you guys know that I love fountain pens. You know that I love guns. You know I love all those things. But did you know that I love stink? Did you know that I love smells? I love things that, that, that smell really, really good. So I got ink all over my hands now because we were feeling on the inks. Um, I want to show you some of my favorite smells. We review guns all the time, but what about smell? So let's sit down and let's review some smells together. So these are my favorite perfumes, okay? And I do like perfumes quite a bit. Parfums, stinks, um, scents whatever you would like to call. You know, they say scent is the strongest thing attached to your to your memory. And so you're gonna remember this day. So right now my favorite stink company is Juliet Has a Gun. These are excellent stinks. And as you can say, this is a tester not for sale. Try it on your skin, which means I definitely bought this discounted from a thieving mall employee. Uh, off of eBay, which is where most of my fine scents have come from. But this Juliet has a gun, it's called Sunny Side Up, and it smells like uh, sandalwood and uh, like uh, uh, sunscreen and a couple other things. It's, it smells like the beach, it smells like June at the beach. What does it actually smell like? I don't know, what is the actual? Whoa. It's pretty accurate. All right, all right, cool, we'll, we'll take that then. I love that, I love, let me show you my, my second favorite right now. I only have, I have two, two, 
samples because I've been cheap and haven't bought a, a discounted uh, a stolen mall tester yet, uh, a full size one. This is also, uh, no, this is not, this is a completely different brand. I don't know why I thought it was Juliet as a gun. It's not, this is from a brand called Dead Cool and they are excellent. This is another uh, stink company that I've recently discovered. Absolutely fantastic stuff. This one is called Red Dakota. And to me, it smells like the custom fender color, Dakota Red. It's very, very awesome. To me, this smells very citrusy and, uh, and fruity, also fresh. My springtime, summer scent. Then, from a company called Replica, I've had a lot of their scents over the years, usually in sample size, because I'm, you know, really cheap about this sort of thing. Uh, it's called Sailing Day. Um, it also smells very, very summery, but it's it's a bit heavier than the other two, and it makes a really good uh, nighttime scent. Can't say enough good things about that. Really, really big fan. But uh, moving on to some other notables. Prada Candy, a modern classic. We all know what that one smells like. You don't need me to tell you. It smells kind of like delicious medicine. Like if there was a way to make the best cough syrup that you could imagine into a scent, it would be that one. Prada Candy. You heard it here, folks. It smells like scissor. Uh, the Lady Gaga Black Fluid, also a modern classic, gone now as far as I know. And so since this isn't being manufactured anymore, they'll start to, the smell will start to change the longer they sit, unfortunately, but these still smell excellent. And I'll probably be spraying that on periodically when I'm 50 and my sense of smell is gone and it's completely spoiled, but I still spray it on myself anyway and think it smells good. This one is another, is, is another dead cool. This is the Rocco Mint. Um, you know, it's called Rocco Mint. To me, I don't get much mint. Um, it smells strongly, strongly of, of jasmine and other uh, and other sort of uh, sort of garden flowers. It is one of the best floral scents that I've ever smelled. Most floral scents are really uh, strident, let's say, and and, and frankly unpleasant. Not this one. Uh, it's light and airy and um, frankly, lovely. It's fantastic. And our last smell, not least, you know, I know I said the other one was last, I lied, that wasn't true. I just forgot about this one, ignore that, don't worry about it. This is the Ariana Grande smell. It's absolutely fantastic. It seems like every white girl under the age of 25 is wearing this now. Uh, God, that's good. That's good, that's really, really, really good. I don't know, you know, I don't know if it's, if I'm really the target, target audience there, but that's a good smell. It's a good smell. All right. Last of all, before we take this, this Buzzfeed quiz here, uh, I want you to help me choose the MRE that I'm going to eat in the next vlog. I know this vlog has probably been a trash fire and you guys aren't going to want another one, but we're going to, we're going to plan for it anyway and let you vote in the comments below. Let's put our inks away, put them away. This is the inks going nowhere, so put our inks away every day. The cat's gonna knock them down. You don't have a cat, which means your wife's gonna knock them down on the ground. Your wife's gonna knock them down on the ground. Did you like my, uh, did you like my song? That was strange. These are the MREs. We're gonna eat one of these next time. I'm gonna do like a fucking, you know, whatever that guy is who I really like. But I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do it my style. We're not copying his style. This is, this is gonna be, it'll be the, the TGP, the TGP way. So we have Mexican style chicken stew, which sounds absolutely fucking foul. And I know that's the one you're gonna pick because of course. Fuck you, of course you are. Menu number 15. I don't people talk about the MREs like they just have the menu numbers memorized. They're like, oh, menu number 15. What a what a legend. Um, menu number 22, Asian style beef strips with uh, vegetables, which uh, uh, des de bouff or uh, légume à la asiatique. And then this one in, in was Ragu de poulet a la Mexicana. Wow, that's fucking awful. Menu number 24, Southwest beef and black beans. Bouf a la Fajon. A Southwest. <laughs> wow, that's delightfully sarcastic. 
<laughs> what are haricots? Oh, hedico? No. That's beans. I'm just fucking with you. I knew what that was. I had years of French. I mean, I, I definitely knew what it was. This is from Sapatco, Moen, South Carolina. Wow, these were these were locally produced. U.S. government property commercial resale is unlawful. Flameless ration heaters are prohibited on commercial airlines unless sealed in original meal bag. Well, thank God we're gonna be preparing these on a plane. By the way, I just, NSA, I swear to God, I have no intention of cooking an MRE on a commercial flight. I'm not, I'm not getting t picked up over some Patriot Act bullshit because I joked about an MRE. Just so you know, I will not go quietly into that good meal plan. All right. I think it's time to take that BuzzFeed quiz. You gonna lay in bed with me and take a BuzzFeed quiz? Yeah. Not you, them. I want them to do it. God, I need the iPad. Well, thank you so much for joining me today for my very first vlog as I filmed the laziest, most low effort content possible. And now to cap the day, what do you say we climb into bed together and take a BuzzFeed quiz? You know, you pretend you're, a, you're a, a, a beautiful Arabian horse with a, a full brown mane. Let's do it. Take off, take off your shoes, though. Don't get your fucking hooves in my in my bed. What, what 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 quiz shall we take here? Wow, we recorded our whole conversation. All right, I have a very specific type in men. Would you smash or pass my favorite daddies, Jeffrey Dean Morgan? That's the Walking Dead man. He has the bat that I think is named like Jennifer or something like that. Jeffrey D. I don't like The Walking Dead. I don't like that show. I'm a, I'm a pass that show. I don't like that. Matt Mickelson. Now, here's a man that I like. Okay. He's one of my favorite bad guys. You know, just look at that guy. Like, that's a good villain. You know, you know, I, I, I smash him. I smash his performances. Tony Dalton. Wait, did it say that he only had 25% smash? Yeah, those people... Fucking dumbasses. All right, Tony Dalton. I mean, he kind of he kind of looks like he has to like get consent from neighbors when he moves. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I don't know with with that kind of mustache. I don't know. I'm a, I'm passing on that. Like I really am. Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr. is one of the most insufferable actors ever probably on this list for sure so he's one of those people who's just like one of those like california fuckers who's like yeah this is i've become so rich and unrelatable like come out here you know you see these guys these are my uh rare cows that I, these are furry cows you know they like they have different coats these are my rare sheep and over here is where i do hot rock ketamine goat yoga and you know over here is where my six personal trainers come see only one of them works with me the the other personal trainers train the other personal trainers. You know, it's just one of the, the you know, uh, services I provide out to the community. I think it better when he was fucked up. You know, like once he went in recovery, like, you know, you need to get fucked up again, Robert Downey Jr. You know, you were a lot, you're a lot better when you're fucked up. David Harbour, he in turn is one of those New York fuckers who's like, I love living in New York so much. It's the greatest thing. I live inside this broom closet. Is that voice the same for both of them? I think it kind of is. I was like, I live inside of a broom closet, you know, here in New York, but it's the best because there's there's $900 coffee downstairs. So I like that, but I love Stranger Things. So, you know, for that, he gets a smash. So I fucking love it. Raul Espaza. This is Espaza. I don't know anything about him. I don't know who that is, but as you can see, his haircut and beard, you know, pretty familiar. Pretty similar to somebody else's that you know. So for that, he gets a smash because I would want him to smash me. Uh, I want you to smash. Eh. Bob Odenkirk, funny. I love Bob Odenkirk. He's a really funny guy. I've been a fan of his of his uh, comedy stylings for a long time. He likes bubble comedy, just like me. Norman Reedus. Norman Reedus. I've heard he's a southerner like me, but. I don't, his name sounds like a like a like a medical thing. Like your 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 retus. Like you went to the emergency. I went to the emergency room because I busted up my retus. I smashed my retus when I 
when I should have passed it. Help me pass. Help me pass my Ritas. So for that reason, you know, you know, I'm not a big fan of his last. Well, actually, am I a fan of? Or, 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 I mean, I'm a fan of my own Ritas being intact, but I don't like The Walking Dead again. Also, his haircut. That's clearly his natural hair and hair color. He looks like he has Timothy Chalamet's hair. Like you can pay ten million dollars once a year, and they'll. Sh- They'll shave Timothy Chalamet They'll share for a million dollars. He looks like, like one of uh, Robert Downey Jr.'s fuzzy I was just child. about to say it, which is also made, which was genetically grown from Timothy Chalamet, from his genes, actually. Mm-hmm. So, or is Timothy Chalamet is grown. I think Timothy Chalamet's grow in those hairy cows and can be harvested annually. So <laughs> that's where Norman Reedus gets this, get this, gets this, uh, this hair from underneath that his hair is like, it's just shaved under there. It's just nothing, you know? Yeah, not a fan of that when old dudes are like, I gotta color my hair to look young. Guess what? You don't. You don't. You just look sad. You just look really sad. Pedro Pascal, love his work. I don't know why he's dressed like a friar right here. Or, or like a, or like a, you know, like a, a rabbi. But he is, you know? He's, uh, you know, just a non-denominationally religious figure. Yeah, yeah just yeah. like a yeah. Uh, what's that? What's that? That that the Unitarian. He was like a Unitarian. Yeah. <laughs> he was like a Unitarian priest. I love his performance in The Mandalorian. You know, even though it's questionable how much of the time that's actually him in the suit, but it's The Mandalorian is lovely. And then I of course love him as Oberyn Martell in Game of Thrones. But he also suffers from. Uh, insufferable California man uh, sometimes. So, uh, a, a hesitant smash. You know? Oh, Norman Reedus. I've got to pass Norman Reedus. I've got to pass him through my Reedus. Patrick Dempsey. Uh, don't know who that is. Uh, don't fucking care. Uh, he looks boring. He looks like uh, like one of those neurosurgeons that you run into at like Whole Foods. Like, that's Patrick Dempsey. So, I'm going to... Uh, I feel like he should get a courtesy smash because he looks like a doctor. Yeah, you know, courtesy smash. Do all doctors get courtesy smashes? Not all of them, but a lot of them do. You know, a lot That's of them a do. troubling precedent you're um, setting. Let's see. You know. Oh, play a game of Smash or Pass with popular celebrities and we'll guess your age. Guess my motherfucking age. Harry Did Styles. PGP people know your age? No, and they never will. Some people, it's really funny. <laughs> I, I'm one of those people who have, no, I, I, I say, I'm one of those people who has a really hard to determine age, I've been told. Like, uh, I've, I've been to, most people think older white dudes who are the most enraged by what I say on the channel generally think that I'm about 25 and they're a decade off, which, you know, makes it, I'm actually just a profoundly immature 35 year old, really. Is, uh, is is actually what's going on here. Or I'll be 35 by the time you watch this video. I'm 35 and a half. I'm 30, 35 and, and four-fifths. Harry Styles. You know, I don't like the Harry Styles. His name sounds like a porn name to me. You know, when somebody's like, that was the music of, of Harry Styles. I don't know. I'm just not a fan, you know. I'm just not a fan. Is that, that's, you know, so I'm, I'm passing. Rihanna. Oh, I'm smack... I like Rihanna. Uh, Jennifer Aniston. Um, she's kind of an irritating person, but she's attractive. Hesitant pass. Hesitant pass. Timothy Charlemagne. He always looks like he doesn't want to be there, like he's posing for a band photo. He's one of those people who's like, hey, I'm Timothy Charlemagne. I don't really know where I am right now. It was just like he just woke up from like, it looks like he just woke up from a ketamine nap, like, all the time, you know? He's, like, too cool to be there. Like, he dissociates because, like, his psyche is too cool <laughs> to be there in his body right then. So, I'm going to pass. Also, when he played Henry in the Netflix period uh, movie, wow, a period movie, man, Mm-mm. I think that's what I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. The movie Carol is a period movie. It's a period piece. It's a period film. I said it. I said it. You can't stop me. I did it. Ah, yeah. 
Yeah, you, you can frown later. It's all right. That's what editing is for. Don't worry about it. Beyonce. Also an annoying person, but I love her music. And she's very attractive, so I'm smashing it. Oscar Isaac. Why do I just hate everybody? I just fucking hate every human being. Do you say the same thing about I say all these time. people? I'm just fucking in, like what the fuck? Maybe I'm the problem. Like what's the common denominator here? Like maybe I'm the problem. Oscar Isaac. I think it's more just that like celebrities are annoying to me. Like they're with all their stuff that they're into, they're fucking irritating. Again, you know what I'm gonna say? What am I gonna say? What am I gonna say? You love him? his work, but he's annoying to you. Bam, you got it. But he's getting a mercy pass. I mean. <laughs> I don't think it's not. <laughs> See, you it's pass. a mercy you pass. pass is like, you're good. We can have sex. It's fine. It's a pass. I give you a pass. You. That's funny. Will Smith. What am I going to say? So, like, Will Smith is one of those people who, like, I actually don't find him that personally irritating, but he's still into all that, like, unrelatable celebrity shit, you know? Like, he's just one of those people where he's like, yeah, you know, me, me and my wife are part of a, you know, celebrity, you know, threesome clubs so that she can go out and you know have a threesome with our yoga instructor you know maybe the guy from jamba juice you know like i'm into that as long as you know she films it and put my favorite instagram filter on it and sends it back to me that way you know he's just he's just weird like that and like him hitting chris rock was like the culmination of him getting called out for that weirdness and i think what bothers people about it is that like will smith was so cool he could have maintained that coolness and instead he like everybody else became like fucking unrelatably whack as he aged. That's so common among celebrities who are cool when they're young. Like something happens, they just get involved in all these whack pursuits, you know, like donating money to like really whack religious causes, punching Chris Rock, who is decidedly unwhack. That was the wackest shit you could do, <laughs> by the way, That's was not true. being able to take a joke and punch Chris Rock. Frankly, Chris, Chris Rock insulting me. Maybe it's just because I'm a fan. It would be the fucking highlight of my life. Like, I wouldn't have gone up there and hit him and been like, you know, get my fucking wife's cheating ass, cuckled and ass name out of your mouth. Okay. You there know. was a lot of things that converged in that moment. You kind of yeah. just felt bad. Will Smith had this look on his face like, you know, all the rage that I feel towards Twitter, I'm just taking out on Chris Rock's face right now. And then Chris Rock is, you know, he has this look on his face like, ha ha, this is going to carry my career for another decade, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that moment where he's like, yeah. where he's like, I won the game, Will Smith. It's fantastic. So Will Smith, uh, actually, the more we talk about this, you get a pass. I don't, I don't, I, no, but not a good pass like we were talking about earlier. Like, not like that kind of good pass. Uh, wait, did it? It's like, that's, uh, okay, I see what it's doing. I see how it's doing it. Scarlett Johansson. You know, I, I kind of like her. You know, she's hot. She, um, you know, she kind of stuck it to Disney with that one thing, even if I thought the lawsuit was complete bullshit. I don't know. You know, I don't actually know that much about her now that I'm actually uh, kind of talking this out and thinking it through. So, you know, what she gets to smash. You know, you know, Michael B. Jordan, love him. Smash. 14, 16 years old. We guessed you were 14 to 16 years old based <laughs> on the celebs you picked to smash your past. Are we close? Yeah, you know. Um, Maybe based on in, maturity level. In terms of maturity level and, and mental faculties, these we don't want to do these 20s, 30s. Promise you won't freak out when we guess your age based on your celebrity preferences. <laughs> is this it. like a trend? What is this? Choose a celebrity. Taylor Swift, Dua Lipa, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, or Timothy Shout. Look, right there. Look, look, look. He is just so... He's like, mm -hmm, too cool for this photo. Uh-huh. Yeah. Timothy Chalamet looks like they tried to do, like, in the vats where celebrities are grown, they tried to do, like, a second edition Michael Jackson. Like, this is, like, like this is, like, Michael Jackson XP. You know what I mean? Like, because Michael Jackson 95, like, didn't work out. You know what I mean? So, like, that's, like, the next iteration. I'm going with Tay-Tay. I fucking love Taylor Swift. I love her music. Choose a celebrity, Samuel L. Jackson, Zendaya, Olivia Rodrigo, and Ed Sheeran. Zendaya I like. Ed Sheeran I absolutely, you know, fucking detest. Um, Ed Sheeran is like a puppet that came to life. Uh, Samuel L. Jackson is one of the greatest actors of all time. Look at how he's dressed right there. That's a baller motherfucker. He's one of my favorite actors of all time. Choose a celebrity. 
Harry Styles, who is dressed like uh, the Queen. Uh, Reggie, Reggie John Page. I don't know who the fuck that is. Kim Kardashian and Sandra O. Oh. Sandra O's oh a great actor. Harry Styles, again, uh, is dressed like the Queen. Uh, or my grandmother. No, my grandmother didn't have fashion like that was that good. Definitely the Queen. Kim Kardashian. I'm going with Kim K. I'm going with Kim K because I don't really care for any of these people. Choose a celebrity. Dolly Parton, Megan Thee Stallion, Idris Elba, Lena. This is a hard list. Holy fuck. Yeah, that's a tough How one. How the fuck am I going to choose between these? These are all the fucking goats. Dolly Parton, I genuinely, unironically love her music. Megan Thee Stallion, I genuinely, unironically love her music. Leonardo DiCaprio, I genuinely, unironically love literally every fucking thing he's ever done. So... The movie, the Baz Luhrmann Romeo plus Juliet, as someone said recently, is one of my favorite movies. But it's also a movie that got me interested in Shakespeare. I remember seeing that as a kid when it first came out and being like, damn, what is this? And so it kicked off a love of both Baz Luhrmann and uh, Shakespeare. And so I have I have Leo, Leo Baz and, and Claire Dames, as, uh, <laughs> as I heard someone say that thing. To then for my love of Shakespeare, which changed my life in many ways, a couple of different ways, really. So, you know, it's part of the reason we're married. Oh, no, the, the audience. Uh, <laughs> fuck. I'm going to keep pulling that joke like as many times as I possible, know. just so you know. And then Idris Elba is a fantastic actor. I don't know. I really don't know what to do here. But I feel like a lot of people probably haven't given Megan the Stallion any love. But I'm going with Leo because that's the truest. Um, and finally, choose a celebrity. Andrew Garfield. I only vaguely know. I think he's one of the Spider-Men. Selena Gomez. I, again, unironically like her music. Simone Biles. And uh, Billie Eilish. I don't, I you know, Selena Gomez and Billie Eilish, I love their music. Both of them. Um, I think that Billie Eilish, I may listen to more. We're just going with Selena Gomez. I don't know why. It just feels right. I'm 40 to 47. <laughs> Based on the famous people you chose, we think you're in your 40s. Did we get that right? I mean, you're close. You know, you're fucking close. You're fucking close. You're, you're, you're kind of close. Is there one more here that we find really appealing? God damn, that was really funny. Promise me you won't freak out or anything, but I can guess your age based on the songs you pick. Hmm, birth year. You look like you're dissociating like Timothy Chalamet. Look, Timothy Chalamet. I'm giving the performance of a lifetime. Yeah. All right, what do you think? What do you think? Birth year. So I think we got to do songs. We got to do songs. I swear to God, this is the last fucking one. Okay. Pick a song. Bow Damn Time by Lizzo. As it was by Harry Styles, Heat Wave by Glass Animals. I don't know any of that. I don't know any of that. But I don't like Lizzo at all. Not a fan. None is an option. And another Big Energy by Lotto, Abkadefu by Gail, Butter by BTS, Rain On Me by Lady Gaga and Ariana Grande, Save Your Tears by The Weeknd and Ariana Grande, It's Very Clear. But how? And another, Sunflower by Post Malone and Swahili. Rip Momney Mood, but these, I, you know, these are hard for me. These are, I do like Sunflower though. I, I'm just, guys, I'm stuck in the past. Where's the Rolling Stones? On here, okay. At least there's Taylor. Pick a Taylor Swift song. Hmm. Oh man, this is this is good. I'm gonna go with "Shake It Off" surprisingly because that's my favorite Tay Tay album. Love it. You know, love that one. Pick a Justin Bieber song. Don't know any. Nineteen to thirty. Based on your choice, I think you're between the age of nineteen and thirty. You definitely like popular music and songs that make you feel good. I don't fuck. Well, fuck. Fuck, this is a bad I got This can't be the quiz we end on. This can't be the quiz we end on. It can't be. It can't be. Can take a House of the Dragon quiz. Where? Just search House of the Dragon BuzzFeed. Okay. 
House of the Dragon BuzzFeed quiz. Speak it. It put speak it in. <laughs> <laughs> speak it. I'm going to laugh if you get like Alicent. <sighs> Fuck. How do I... Uh, okay. You might not be Targaryen material, but let's find out which House of the Dragon character you are. How do others describe you? Complex, brave, passionate, unique, daring, or stoic? They would describe me as, I think, unique. <laughs> <laughs> Choose a color. Black. Choose a popular GOT character. Of these, man, this is a... I'm just like... I'm just a fucking Jon Snow fan. You Aren't know? we all? Choose an animal. Bat, dog, horse, cat, owl, deer. <laughs> horse. I like, that it, I like that it's a cat that's loafing. It's like... Yeah. Fucking, it's loafed up <laughs> like... Mm, yeah. And it's a horse... That horse is like... Oh, my God. It's so it's good to itself. be me. But flying fox. I am truly a flying fox. I'm a disgusting... Orgiastic poo poo machine. Just wow. like a bat. Also, I'm a big owl fan. You know, praise be to Athena, but I'm going with bat. Choose a house. Man. I don't know which one. I think, though, there's something about that sort of like gardeny cottage. And lastly, choose another hit TV show. Stranger Things, Euphoria, Squid Game, She-Hulk, Better Call Saul, Only Murders in the Building. I don't know Only Murders in the Building. I'm absolutely not watching She-Hulk. But I guess that really, like, kind of cuts this list out a lot. I'm going with Stranger Things. Let's see who I am. Oh! 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 Damon Targaryen, you're an experienced warrior. <laughs> In whatever sense that may be, you've dealt with a lot of strife. Sometimes you're impulsive. I'm not impulsive. You're impulsive. And don't think things through, but you always fight for what you read more. Believe in. It was hiding believe in. Yes, I'm Damon fucking Targaryen. That's right. That's right. I'm Damon Targaryen. Fuck. Thank you for joining me for this lovely vlog, which stands for a very large orgy gooch. And we've had a lovely day filled with uh, pens, uh, BuzzFeed. What else did we look at today? Uh, guns, a couple guns, shower gun. Smells. Smells. Uh, a lot of other things. It was good. I'm just looking what I'm doing with my feet. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Thank you so much for joining me. Seriously, if you enjoyed this vlog, I'll do more vlogs. Odds are good you're going to write to me and say, what the fuck did I just watch? And you know what? That's totally okay. No one can blame you for that. But if you do want more, let me know and you'll get more. Because this was a lot easier to make than a gun review. Thank you for watching. Hope you have a wonderful evening. I'll talk to you soon. Good night.